The God factor of my life is in every essence of my work, it's in every essence of my being. Um, there's no way I could treat it separately because it is one and the same. It's only by His grace that I even found out that I had a gift. The other day, there's an elderly woman. Her name is, oh gosh, I can't remember. I saved it on my phone. She called me. I thought I was getting a prank phone call. I was on the phone, with, on speakerphone, laughing with my son, like, who is this trying to prank me? But it was actually an elderly woman who had gone to the dentist's office, and she saw the painting of Wayne. And she said, she was like, I had to call you because I was so sick when I walked in and when I sat in front of your painting, I felt better. She said, my husband has cancer. Is there a way for me to bring the painting home so that he also can feel better? And I'm looking at her like, lady, are you serious? But then it's like, but Sophia, this is what you prayed for. So I went to Staples, I got her a print, I put it in a frame, she left money. I'm like, lady, I don't want your money, just take the thing. And she called me and thanked me. But that's that, her intention was I want to put the painting in front of my husband because he's in pain and I wanted to leave him. So yeah, it's art, yeah, it's beautiful, but you're supposed to, if, if I'm someone who carries the Holy Spirit, if it is the Holy Spirit that has done these paintings through my body, you should go in front of it and get deliverance. You should go in front of it and have healing. There have been, by the grace of God, 11 or 12 political prisoners who have been locked up for 30, 40, 50 years who were supposed to, on paper, die in prison, who are home now, living their best life, FaceTiming me. I can't, and I don't take credit because I know that it takes lawyers and organizers and this and that and that to physically make it happen. But I also know that spiritually, something has to be won spiritually before it's won physically. And God was always looking for someone to stand in the gap, to wage war, so that the spiritual thing could happen, so that we could see it show up on earth. In 2010, um, maybe March, like 11 years ago actually, uh -huh. I was in uh, African American history class. I was in that class for the whole year from fall to spring. I was also pregnant that year and gave birth. And so I slept through most of her classes, unfortunately, because I was just, it was just a side effect of being pregnant. And I didn't know, but um, on this particular day, we watched a documentary um, that I stayed awake for. And by the time the documentary was over, I was physically, like my body was physically shaking. Um, it started with MLK, it talked about Malcolm X, it talked about Quentin Pro, how the FBI targeted potential black messiahs to try to wipe them out. Um, and then it went into the Black Panther movement. It talked about all the people that were killed, how, you know, J. Edgar Hoover basically declared war on this organization that was feeding the community, that was creating free health programs, free breakfast programs. And all the people that died, that was one part, like not died, but that were killed, young people, the average Panther was 13 to 21 years old. And then all the people that got locked up. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. And I actually thought I was watching, like it was just history. And so I went up to my professor and I was like, I wanna learn more. Um, and that's what I, that's why, I, again, I don't take credit because it was a classroom full of 30 people. I'm the only one who's still talking about it 11 years later. So that is what you call the pricking of the Holy Spirit. And I think everybody has that moment with something and some news, but either you act on it or you choose to ignore it.